Hello and welcome to another inbox review. You could call this classic plastic because this is definitely a very classic kit as you can see. The old Hasegawa 148BF109E or Messerschmitt BF109E whichever we call it, it's a Messerschmitt aircraft. And as you can see, that's uh, I've just kind of done a little bit of inbox review of it, mainly from my last video. Uh, if you actually did ask for it or I don't know but anyway uh, this is the kit, it's a beautiful box art of I think it's JG23 I think, I'm not sure during the Battle of France, and as you can see attacking the Maurice Slawny 406, so it's definitely Battle of France's markings beautiful artwork by is it Kobe Shigeru? I don't know Anyway, uh goes an amazing Japan model length one eighty three millimeters wing excuse me wingspan two hundred and six millimeters and fifty six pieces so not much for a beautiful aircraft. You see on the side here, I don't know if you can see that or not. Got some model illustrations on the side of the model. Um no. Oh, that's nothing. Yes, uh, kit number, kit number work I find here we go, is J O O one semicolon one five O O. There we go. So that's how it is. So we take the box off, and basically there's a load of stuff to go through here. Just a load of stuff. Right, so just separate everything out. Um, tell you what, let's go through the instructions first. Seems that's settled that away. We got all the plastic in this box. So as you can see, um, we get a painting guide. Turn it the right way for you guys. We get a painting guide. Uh, 109 E3 148 scale, and of course it's the box art one, which has the battle schemes on, telling you what colours you want. Of RML 65, RML 70, RML 71. An RML02 on the upper surfaces and lower surfaces there, and that really is that sheet of paper. So this is a completed model that someone's created, and I forgot it's one JG2. Sorry, I twenty three. Where did I get that from? Anyway, moving on. Uh, that's our first thing. The instructions. Now your basic information. Illustrated model of what someone's built in black and white, of course. Um, it does say, I think this kit was made in 1988, so yeah, it is a bit of classic plastic. It's another 10 years older than me, is it? Let me think about this, no, do you? Yes, exactly 11 years. So there we go. No, 9, sorry, 9 years older than me. So 19, yep. 27 years old this kit is and looks absolutely stunning anyhow moving on. Uh, we, we just open this up so it's a simple page booklet so moving on with the cockpit now the cockpit is beautiful we've got uh, a seat going on to a frame here our rudder pedals fitting onto the wall wall fitting onto the cockpit tub floor steering um, joystick going in there and the seats going on and the seat belts are moulded in so if you wanted some uh, photo etch something you'd have to hollow them out but the details so nice this kit I don't see why you should be hollowing them out anyway so there you go uh, moving on we've got the side walls going on now they can be painted uh, that is an oh okay hey Sorry, I just need to check something. Oh, that is correct. Yeah, so I thought they got the uh, wrong colours because I saw H17. I thought it was RML70, so I thought that's the wrong colour. No, it's O2 uh, green. Of course, that's going there. An instrument panel going on in here. That's going there. Now, this is something um, I've actually thought, wow, to. This kit, despite being 
its age, actually has photo etch in it. Now that's the first time I've actually seen photo etch. Oh, excuse me, guys. Sorry. Photo etch on a 1988 Hasegawa kit. That is amazing. Now I'm going to show you it later. So we've got the photo etch of the threat of the intakes and the grills going into the wings here, and there you go on top. Got the air intake front going in, uh, and the cockpit tow seating together. Fuselage going to the wings. You got your flaps and your ailerons there. And there's one thing you can't have your ailerons at different positions on this kit. Uh, moving on, your tail wheels and that's going on there. Your actual tail going on there, and your stabilizers on there. Stabilizers, what am I talking about? The wheels going on down there. Assemblies here, sorry. Engine cowling, put your machine guns in the front here. Having to put, pop that on closed because there's no engine. Prop when the pin goes through there onto the spinner. Air intake on the side here. Another piece of photo etch for the actual cockpit frame for the. Um, cockpit windows and the doors and the armour plating on there, that fits into there and that is that and that really is it guys, that is really your build of the, of the 9 now on the back here we get um, two colour call outs we have the box art one which is a uh, group 1 of JG2 of the Richthofen squadron flown by Otto Bretman May 1940, France. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this game, it looks a bit bland. Too much work on the wings there. And this one, if you remember, I've already built. And this is six group of JG-51 flown by Joseph Priller of 1940. So I've already built this one, so I don't think I'll be needing to build this one again. So there are the question. And then of course you got your stencil markings going on the bottom there. Very nice. So that's that the instructions. Now we move on to the marking schemes. You've just seen two. Now I'm surprised. In total, there is six markings you go on there, but one has a catch, which I'm gonna go through with you in a bit. Okay. So this is the um, painting guide we have in this kit. I've decided already. I am going to do this scheme, and I've just fallen in love with this scheme. I don't know what it is, I just have. But um, there is a bit of confusion on this scheme, though, guys. Um, I don't know if we can see, but on this wing here, it stops and goes across there. In reality, that just went straight across there, and I think I might do the same. I don't know. Anyway, I've fallen in love with this one. And this is 9 Squadron JG-54, flown by, sorry, I'm just going to turn it around, Wilderman Burke of 1940. So, looks absolutely beautiful scheme, attractive, yellow 11, the, the street size. Yeah, it looks nice. Next one, which is number 4, um... This is a very early one, a Battle of Poland one, of a Group 2 of JG-53 um, flown by a Group of Judgment, is it? No, sorry it's not. Don't know who flew this one. Uh, September 1939, or summer 1939, sorry. Uh, you might recognise this one from the famous uh, photograph that was taken of this Messerschmitt stood in front of this Ju-52 with the engine cowlings all open. This is the actual aircraft. So that's a kind of iconic aircraft that you will see in that photograph. So that's that one. Next one, very interestingly, is the Condor Legion of Group 3 of J-88 flown by our Lieutenant Hans Haldi. It's a very attractive scheme, and it's a real shame because I really like it. I really, really do like it, but... Oh, I'm just on an hour on what to do in a minute. I am doing this, this scheme, but it's a really, really attractive scheme, this is. 
Okay, so this is where it throws in the paper towel at this point because you see here a very nice 109 in a very attractive, very early 1937 scheme. Now you have to point out that the 109E wasn't built in 1937. So if you look closely, it says BF 109 B2. So this is one of the very first models that came out, B2. Even though it's a 109E kit, and E box art, and E parts, it is given a B model, which I do not know why. So you get the decals for it. Oh, well, so sorry. But I don't know, Hasegawa. Why have you done that? Why, oh why? So yeah, that's kind of like a scheme you can do for the one. Uh, oh, so it says includes bonus decals for the B type. We don't have the B type. Here we go. This is where it says, you know, printed in Japan, 1988. There you go. That's how old this kit is, and there's proof for it. And that is the proof for the missing identity. The one that got away kind of thing. So that's that. Right, so the decals. Now, when I got this kit, they were a bit yellow and they still are a touch. Now, as we know, Haska decals, they are a bit thick, but I am going to try and do my absolute best with this kit and see what we can do. So this, let me just take this out of the bag. Now, here are the decals. Now, after being in the bag for so many times, they are a bit yellowed, sadly, so you might have to get an aftermarket set if your decals are really, really bad. But I think what I'm going to do is a technique of putting them in the window for good sunlight, let that yellowness come out, let's, let's sit and see where it goes then, because, you know, all those decals to waste is such a sorry, sorry sight to see. There we go. Very sorry indeed. Oh, the, ooh, that's giving me an idea actually. Sorry, I'm trying to look out for schemes for another model. I'm sorry, but... Did you guys hear that at all? Okay, that just kind of creeped me out, I'm sorry, but if you know me too well, things go on here. I swear to God I heard someone cough. Okay, that really creeped me out, okay. I'm going to see what that was. As you can see, the two fuselage hives hives, halves, are neatly together. The tail wheel, well, the rudder, sorry, is all moulded into one. We've got the tail wheel sat here. What is it? Come on. Anyway, the it's kind of like moulded like that, so that slots into there like that, but it gives such a massive gap around there. A big massive gap actually, so some filler might be used in that. One nice thing I, I do like about this kit when it actually functions together, like so, is that at the back of here, let me just get that, it, the plate is actually really soft and smooth, so if we sand that down a bit, Front plate is good, and it's actually got some nice injector pin marks going on in there, and it fits completely beautiful. Now I don't know what it's like with the parts in place, but that's my phone. There you go, and that is it. So that's going to sit on the side here. Now one part of the sprue. 
we have our um, ailerons at the back here, our wheels, spinner, back plates there, your stabilizers, your front um, slats, and the front here we have our bulkhead, our seats with a nicely moulded um, harnesses in there, and our instrument panel is not too bad, and the detail on that is very good. Uh, just a bit of scratch building on that would actually do that trick. It is all lovely and moulded. That piece is there. Next piece is another part of the fuselage where that should go. On this kit we've got a bomb rack for one big bomb. Don't know what for. Our prop. Landing gear. Landing gear wheels. Our cockpit tub. Our front cowling. Your flaps. And your two cockpit sidewalls going there. Once again lovely detail going there, I see no problem whatsoever. That's going to rest in there. And our last sprue, plastic sprue anyway, are the wings. And naturally, my aircraft won't be out an aircraft without wings. Uh, and we have our beautiful, it's all nicely um, panelled lines. Uh, Power lines are great, there's no rivets in the actual frame, so I think either a riveter would be beneficial if you wanted to. Uh, we've got our front nose cone, bottom of our cockpit, our air intakes here and here. This part's for your bombs, so you might not need that. Uh, in the front grille slats, yeah, trim wheels, cockpit, um, joystick, and yeah radio antenna. So that is really the kit. So that's going to go back in there. Uh, another thing that I've noticed, if I take this away, you'll see that the cannons are already moulded on the kit. Which is kind of a bad sign because you'll easily just knock them off, which I don't really want to do. So that goes all back in there. And last but not least, we've got a couple of more things. Naturally, we have our canopy clear sections. They are beautiful guys, beautiful. Naturally we only have um, one style of armoured, well armoured, um, windscreens because it's the E3 which meant it was the early type canopies, our gun sights and even a piece of armour plated if we chose to do so. But apart from that it's lovely moulded. You can see right through that. Wow. And last but not least, we have our piece of photo etch fret. We get the front grille, two um, air intakes underneath the fully oil, and of course our um, oh blimey, what's it called? Pack panel plate thingy. Oh, my mind's gone blank. What is that called? It's um, it's armor plate, armor plating. That's it. I don't know what that one's for. Number five. But anyhow, that is it. The kit, guys. That is your kit. I have to say, if Hasegawa can do this so many years ago, why can't most companies do better now? Well, they do. Oh, I think I just dropped the penny there, sorry guys. But seriously, this is the model kit. I am going to start this because I absolutely love it. And that is really it, guys. That is your review of the old 1988 Hasegawa 148BF109E3. With beautiful decals, more than you could shake a stick at. Okay, so we're getting on with the cockpit of this beautiful aircraft. So we've got our cockpit floor here. So this is the tub section. And then we have um, our first part, which is actually the seats going in. 
and then our joystick and the rudder pedals connect into the back plate. So what we're going to do is cut some parts off the sprue. Now this is actually the um, the seat. And as you can see, seat and seat is actually beautifully moulded into detail basically. I mean the seat harnesses are like so like so. And it's actually beautiful. I don't know if you can see. So then just take this piece off there. And while we're at it, we're going to cut this piece off here. And last but not least, our firewall. Well, bulk plate, whichever you want to call it. So that's going to be just cut off there. That's to go on there. And apparently that now fits the um bottom seat bars of things. Well, okay. Uh, does that actually fit like that? Okay, so that's a bit weird. Just gonna get some glue. We install that together. Stick that onto there. That then apparently fits on to the back. Like so let's take this, press it down into there. Okay, this is a bit fiddly. across the bottom there. So these little Hasegawa kits are kind of um, fiddly but they also produce very excellent detail and actually there's actually one piece I haven't put in which is the Um, the rudder pedals, I haven't cut them off sprue. Rudder pedals, there you are. So Okay, that's a bit weird. Okay, so let's trim that off there. So that's a bit fiddly, that's part. So apparently that all fit onto there. Okay. 
somehow. Um, okay. Okay. Like so. I suppose there's a bit of overhang on this last piece here. So I'm just going to place some glue onto the bottom of this. I'll fix it into position like that. And there you have it. So that's the cockpit tub done. Well, mainly most of it anyway. And actually we have forgotten to put one thing in it. The joystick. I forgot all about, about that. So just cut that off there. Just trim that off. Oh, okay, well. Sorry, I've got uh, my window open, side here. Well, not window open, uh, curtains drawn back, sorry. A bit of wind's coming through the actual old place there. Okay, I'm just having a look at this. Wondering how this goes together. Bit of a weird one this is. Ah, uh, that's a good question. Does that fit in there like that? Or... Oh, it's like it's just landed there. That was so lucky. Apparently that fits into there. Like so. Well, I think that is it. Okay, everything is done for the bottom piece. And now what we have to do now is let everything dry and start painting, I believe. Okay, we've got the parts here. They are mounted on a bit of cocktail stick with a bit of blue tack in the end onto a bit of foam. And that is really it. And what we're going to do is, we've got some airbrush here, got some... Uh, RLM02 paint, which is the Humbrol, Humbrol, Revel 45. I'm just going to spray a nice coat of that over the top. Take the pressure a bit. On there. Turn that around. Okay, that gives a nice base coat on the Like so. And what we'll do now, leave that to dry and then give it another hole 
a new coat, basically. I even painted up on this little kit, well, cockpit. Uh, the only thing I've really added that's extra is the foot pedals where the straps go across. That was just done in fit cards, cut to like that, and then super glued into position, and of course, painted brown, and that's that really. I have to admit, everything I've done on this has been painted in Revel acrylics, basically. And I painted the cockpit, as you saw, with the RMLO2, which is 45. Seat belts painted in beige green, not beige green, just beige in total. Troll stick, uh, top part black, bottom part brown, the same as the other lot, which was 84. And the other side surfaces here painted actually oh tell I the gold tips on there that wasn't um revel that was actually Tamaya that was the top one so kinda of failed that already sorry. So we got that and then the other top the other side panel I've added the um was it is like the chains, the flaps and all that control surfaces on there and paint is the exact same and that is really it that's what I've done and she looks absolutely fabulous <laughs> so now what we do is now it's done I've also done some chipping on as well I'm gonna give it just a quick little wash basically and with that I'm going to select a brush if I can find just a decent one uh, so let's go with this one and actually no um, I'm going to take this one I'm just going to add a very very thin wash of black to the model so take some water thin that down a touch just thin it down a touch more like so what we're going to do is go straight across like so giving it a nice wash all over just like that and that is it I'm just going to leave that to dry now and that will be fine just like that same again this side So, just going to take some of that off. Like that. And that's that done there. Let's get rid of that. And there. And last but not least, our cockpit details just if you're new to washers just get it anywhere basically because it's pretty nice touch and give that model that extra bit it will like so with that the wash is now complete like so now what we do you leave it to dry which is a tedious task if you're impatient but that's all and with that I'll crack on and see you in the next part ok so it's just typical isn't it you just get in, into the things and a power cut happens and so if it does go off this camera then I'm sorry but I can't charge this battery up but anyhow we're going to crack on 
Uh, we're going to install the cockpit sidewalls here. Now apparently these are supposed to go on before the actual um, putting together the two halves. Apparently that there's two little pins which they go into there like that. Of course one here, one here. Okay, I think there's a bird just coming up into the hedge where my window sits. Fits into that side. And then, last but not least, the instrument panel apparently fits on, and I've done some really good work on that instrument panel, I love it. Apparently, apparently that's where it's supposed to sit. Like something like that. There you go. That sits on like so. So I'm just going to pop some glue into that. There and there. Just nudged it across a bit. Six and a half hours late. So, as you can see, my battery did kind of die afterwards. I told you it would have done, but there you go. Uh, anyway, the fuselage. It's actually turned up a treat. No fit problems, just a bit of sanding, and that is it. No filler required whatsoever. That is very good in my eyes. Wow. Anyway, moving on. Um, we'll work on the wings basically. And before I set things off, I just want to point out a few things which I've done. Uh, there's parts which fit into this part. I've done this one just to test fit how they go together. Uh, this is our actual um, some kind of detail from these there. And then we've got a grill plate that goes at the back here. So that goes on there. Nose fit, absolute perfect. Nothing wrong with that. But it was actually fitting these two together because if you see there, there's um, the bottom of the firewall that's there was basically too big for that to fit on like that Let me just go and click it was too big and so it was lifted up basically a quite a bit and with that it would just made a such a huge gap so what I had to do was file this down until it can actually fit in there and that is all I've done and there you go so just gonna put that to the side there. I'm just gonna start cutting off the piece for this uh, radiator bracket in here, like so. I've also noticed you um, brought the camera a bit down because I had a bit of a complaint where someone was saying um, you can only see the cutting mats basically. Okay, so right, so I brought it down and that fits on like so. Just add a touch of glue to it. And knock it out of place, why don't I? So that's one place, and the grill plate cut off like so. Come on. And that really slots 
perfectly into there. So I'm just going to take some less super glue to for photo etch. Like so. Okay, so with that done, we can actually get on with putting uh, this bottom half into here. Nothing else to do by instructions, is there? No. Can just slot into there. Some glue on the wing roots. Take that away, I like so. So that's perfectly fitted onto there. Last but not least. Put the engine, not engine, what the hell? Wings on. I've also painted that RMO2 grey, which goes on top of there like that. So I'm just going to just go put some. up top of there like that Some glue to seam lines there. Okay, so that's going to there perfectly. Check the other side as well. Just put that up there. Last but not least, that fits on to there. If I could just get it on. Okay, so just go. There. Okay, 
Right, so I'm just going to get some pegs. I think that'll do it then. Yeah, perfect fit. Not so bad, I do say so myself. That is very beautiful. No seam lines, no gaps. Wow. And there we are. Right, well, I'm going to get some pegs, clamp it all off, let it dry, and then we'll carry on with the rest of the build.